Um, Andrew K says, thank you for uh, thank you for a five dollar super chat, Andrew K. I have a GetRC Bind and Fly Mark V with Betaflight 4.3. Added a GPS. Want to upgrade to 4.4 for better rescue? Will I lose the stock tune? Yes, you will. Um, I would. I would. I would think hard about whether that's the right thing to do. 4.4 does have a little better GPS rescue. Oh, I think he's back. Blunty, are you back? I have returned. <laughs> okay, one second. Um, we'll let you finish that thought because I know people want to hear it. Um, uh, I would, uh, there are some issues with 4.4, then there are reasons why bind and fly manufacturers are not shipping 4.4 yet, even though it does have better GPS rescue. I would strongly advise you, if you try it out, go for it, but save your config dump, do a, do a full config dump in the CLI and save that so that if you have to roll back to 4.3, you can easily restore your config. Zenny says, I have purchased custom lenses for my V2 goggles, and yet, at the very edges of the screen, it's still blurry. I am annoyed I can't get the picture perfect. Zenny, uh, thank you for your $20 super chat. I wish for $20 I could give you a better answer. The solution is going to be to shrink the screen. The, the very large screen of the V2 goggles means that for some people you're not going to get crisp edge to edge it just depends on your eye placement and your head size and and unfortunately if you're one of those people who can't get it edge to edge crisp the only solution i mean in theory i suppose you could get a lens manufactured that shrinks the screen like that's got to be a thing someone could do but realistically the in the in uh product solution is there's a scaling option for the screen and you just scale the screen down to 90 percent, and then you're good I mean, that's that's probably not the answer you were hoping for, but unfortunately, I think that is the actual realistic answer. Twidget asks, is the MPU 6000 still getting discontinued? Thank you for a $5 super chat. Twidget, um, the MPU 6000 has been end of life from its manufacturer for as long as I've been in FPV. What that means is that their official stance is that no one should make new designs with this because they might not have enough to finish their product life cycle. The, the thing is though, manufacturers will usually mark a product end of life significantly before they actually stop manufacturing it. Because the idea is they end of life it today, every product that uses it today still needs to maybe have a realistic life cycle where the manufacturer doesn't get screwed over by the fact that this gyro is not available anymore. Um, so then they keep manufacturing it, but they say it's end of life, no new products, and then eventually they stop making it. The MPU 6000 has been end of life for, I mean, uh, like, I'm not 100% sure, but literally as long as I've been FPV, so like seven years, eight years. 2017 is when I was, I saw, the, when I was looking up dates. Okay, so not quite as long as I've been in FPV. Pretty close, though. Um, and and eventually perhaps they'll stop making it but perhaps they're just marked at end of life so they can stop making it whenever they want but also as long as it's selling maybe they're going to keep effing making it we just don't know just just to be clear there's the term they use called nrnd which is not recommended for new design and that's the yeah. state it's been in for like eight seven or eight years now so yeah yeah so they may stop making it at any point but they also might just keep making it. That's the status. By the way, if they do stop making it, the BMI 270 is fine. The BMI 270 is fine. Chris Rosser tested them. Don't And don't tell me, well, he only tested them on the bench, but one of them flies far more buttery. The MPU 6000 flies like Irish cream on salted butter, but the BMI 270, why that flies, shut up. He tested them on the bench. The frequency, the spec sheet says they're basically the same. The test on the bench shows that they're basically the same. They're basically the same. So BMI 270 is fine. And anybody who says it's a feel thing, Steve Tricks, I'm looking at you. Duh, blind test, blind test. Stop making unsubstantiated claims about unquantifiable stuff without testing to back it up. If you think you can feel the difference between a BMI 270 and an MPU 6000, I want you to build four identical quadcopters, two of them with a BMI and two of them with the MPU, put the exact same config, the exact same PID tune on them. The only difference between them will be the gyro and then fly them blind 
and you see if you can get a statistically significant number of guesses correct. And if you do, I will eat my words with a smile because I have no problem accepting claims that are backed by evidence, even if those claims disagree with my preconceived notions. In fact, I enjoy that mostly. But I'm tired of people making claims like, oh, I can feel the difference between X and Y, and I don't believe you, and no one actually takes the time, almost no one takes the time to actually freaking test it. They just say it. And then they just like, oh, yeah. Hmm. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. <clears throat> Kudos to the rare people who actually do testing to validate this stuff. Little rant. Rant over. Kevin James, thanks for a $5 super chat. Do you think anyone will do a review on the Foxier 5G8 Reaper 5 watt VTX? I'm curious how far a glider could go with it. Um, Kevin, it's very difficult to do tests of high powered VTXs because it's very difficult in most parts of the world to legally do long range flights. Wesley Vardy was doing some of them. He got dinged by the CASA and he had to take all his videos down because he was concerned that if he didn't do that, then they might go harder on them. I'm not going to say more about his case because I think at this point he is hoping that if he just flies under the radar and is a good boy, that he will not hear from them anymore. And we should all, you know, respect that decision of his because if they decided to F him over, they could fine him potentially a lot of money and that would be bad. Um, so somewhere out there, someone's going to take that 5-watt VTX and they're going to fly it line of sight to the edge of its range. And that's going to be 60 kilometers or something stupid, depending on what antenna they choose. And what's and then how who's going to do that? Where are they going to do that? Where is that going to be legal? Very few people are going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Um, when I fly at my house, some people say, I, I, I wonder if Bardwell actually has a spotter. And some people say, I wonder if Bardwell actually maintains line of sight well, everywhere he flies, or does he sometimes not have line of sight? And I say, I have no comment about that. If you think, if you work for the FAA and you think I'm breaking the rules, you get in touch with me. And that's all I say. But if I put up a video with a long range flight testing a five watt video transmitter, there would be it would be very difficult to have any plausible deniability at all about whether I was breaking the rules. And that's why I'm, I'm not going to do that. What I'm saying is my official stance is I always follow the rules. And if you think I'm not following the rules, then at least I want plausible deniability. And I can't get any of that with a long range flight. So it's just not going to happen. <clears throat> 